Hi, my name is Dr. Jay Desai and I welcome you all to this fifth video for the GATE series for Metallurgical Engineering. In this video, I will be talking about crystal defects or crystal imperfections. But more specifically, I will be talking about point defects. So when we say crystal defect or crystal imperfections, they are nothing but they are deviations from ideal atomic or ionic arrangements. Means, suppose you have an arrangement of atom and ion or ion and there is some deviation in this arrangement. Then this deviation is what we call as crystal defects or crystal imperfections. But from the application's viewpoint, the material is not considered defective. Now these defects may be desirable or it may not be desirable. They are desirable in applications, for example, suppose we want to increase the strength of metals and alloys, then these imperfections are really desirable. For example, we add carbon and iron to increase the strength of iron. Also, if we want to obtain desired magnetic, optical, electronic or mechanical properties, then also these imperfections are desirable. For example, alumina is transparent. But if we add chromium to it, then we obtain a red ruby crystal, which uh, is highly desired. But in many cases, these crystal defects or crystal imperfections are not desirable. For example, in single crystal silicon, here the presence of dislocations, which are line defects, adversely affect the properties of the material. And we do not want any kind of defect present in this material. So, the crystal defects may be useful, it may not be useful. Now, what are point defects? In the perfect crystal structure, if there is a, some movement of atom or ion or a pair of atom and ion, and because of this movement, there is a localized disruption, then we say that this is a point defect. So the localized disruptions in an otherwise perfect crystal structure is what we mean by point defects. And this usually involves an atom or ion or a pair of atom or ion. Now, why are they really present or how are they introduced in a material? Why does a material have point defects? It is because if we suppose we heat the material, then there may be atomic or ionic moment which may lead to vacancies on cooling. These uh, point defects may be present or they may be introduced during the materials processing or these point defects may be introduced when we are deliberately adding other atoms to improve the properties of a particular material. So these are three major ways by which we can uh, incorporate point defects or the point defects are unintentionally introduced in the system. Now, there are five types of point defects, vacancy, substitutional defect, interstitial defect, Frankel defect, and Schottky defect. In the vacancy, what happens is, there is an atom present in a regular site, and this atom or ion, which is in the regular site, goes missing. So, there is an area where there is no occupancy of atom or ion, and this uh, area is what we call as vacancy. Now, since this area is created, the atom is missing, this will lead to an overall increase in entropy, which will affect the thermodynamic stability. And this is the role of point defects in a system. Now, how do we calculate how much number of vacancies will be present at a given temperature? So, there is an equation for equilibrium number of vacancies, Nv equals to N exp minus QV by RT, where NV is an equilibrium number of vacancies per centimeter cube at a given temperature, N is the number of atoms per centimeter cube, QV is the energy required to produce one mole that is 6.023 into 10 to 23 vacancies, R is the gas constant which is 1.987 calories per mole Kelvin or 8.31 joule per mole Kelvin and T is in temperature that is in Kelvin. So this is the equation for equilibrium number of vacancies. But 
in most practical applications we do not get the equilibrium number of vacancies because it is not uh, possible to ob obtain equilibrium at every step that is why what we get is non equilibrium concentration of vacancies which should be more than this nv because there may be an energy or entropy effects now interstitial defects and substitutional defects if there is an extra atom or an ion is present in a normally unoccupied crystal lattice position so here are the usual positions and these are the vacancies or the spaces between atoms and if by some reason some other atom or ion comes in this uh, position then this is what we call as interstitial defects now substitutional defect suppose you have a crystal structure of one atom and a particular atom is replaced by a different type of atom or ion then we say it as a substitutional defect now there are other two kinds of defects called frankel defects and schottky defects these defects are usually seen in ionic solids which are which show a crystalline nature so in frankel defects what happens is atoms or ions they move from a regular side and they occupy the interstitials for example here there was an atom which was present in a regular side and it moved from here to here and if we have this kind of scenario then we say that the material has a frankel defect then schottky defect in schottky defect suppose there is a anion which is over here and there is a cation maybe over here and if this cation and anion both leave from the regular side and they move somewhere else then we say that the material has a schottky defect so these are five different types of point defects which may be present in a material because of number of reasons in the next video i will be talking about uh, line defects and uh, to watch more videos and support my work please subscribe to my channel thank you